Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. What I'd like to do is show you how to solve this absolute value inequality. And whenever we're solving equation, I'm sorry, whenever we're solving an absolute value equation, what we basically want to make sure that we do is, um, you know, first of all, make sure that we create our two cases. But we can only create our two cases once we have our absolute value solved. So we got to make sure that we solve for our absolute value first. So to do that, I need to undo all the operations that are happening to my absolute value. So you can see here, I'm, I'm having my absolute values being multiplied by 4 as well as being subtracted by 4x. So I'm going to undo each of those. So I'll add a 4x to both sides first. Then I have 4 absolute value of 3x plus 4 is equal to 4x plus 8. Then I undo the multiplication of 4, so I divide by 4. And I have 3x plus 4 absolute value is equal to 4x divided by 4, which is going to be x. Sorry. 8 divided by 4, which is positive 2. And now you can see I have my absolute value isolated. So therefore, again, I need to create my two cases. One where the value inside my absolute value is positive, and one where that value is negative. And to do that, when we create our two cases, we can now kind of get rid of the absolute value. Because that's exactly what the absolute value is telling us, is it, this value could be positive or negative, but it's going to have the same solution. So to that's the case for the positive. To write the case for the negative, what I'm simply going to do is just take the opposite of my other side of what's not inside my parentheses. So now I simply just go ahead and solve. So I subtract x, subtract x, and I have 2x plus 4 is equal to a positive 2. Subtract 4, subtract 4. 2x equals negative 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2 x equals negative 1. Now again, whenever we're dealing with absolute value equations, we're going to want to make sure we plug that, um, plug that value back in to make sure the solution works. But let's go ahead and solve the next one first. So to do that, I need to make sure I distribute my negative sign. So I have here 3x plus 4 is equal to a negative x minus 2. Then again, solve for my x's, so I add an x onto both sides. So I have 4x plus 4 is equal to a negative 2. Again, subtract 4, subtract 4, 4x. Added an x, add an x, 4x, OK. Um, 4x is equal to, I did this uh, negative 6, divide by 4, divide by 4. x equals, that's a positive 6, isn't it? No, it's a negative 6. Equals a negative 3 halves. Mm. All right, well, I guess we'll see where it goes. Um, so again, let's go ahead and plug in now to test each one of these solutions. I have 4 times 3 times negative 1 plus 4 absolute value minus 4 times negative 1 equals 8. Right? So you're going to take, the take your value and plug it back into your equation and see if it works. Well, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 plus 4 is going to be um, negative 3 plus 4 would be positive 1. Absolute value of positive 1 is still 1. Right? And then times 4 is going to give you 4. Negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4 equals 8. And you can see, yes, that works. For the second case, now I need to plug in a negative 3 halves. So I have 4 times 3 times negative 3 halves plus 4 minus 4 times negative 3 halves equals 8. All right, so I have 4 absolute value. This becomes a negative 9 halves plus 4 minus, this becomes a positive 6 equals 8. Uh, whew, da, 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 da. This is really 8 over 2, right? 4, when written as a denominator, is 8 over 2. So it's 4, absolute value of negative 1 half plus 6 equals 8. Well, negative 1 half is the value of a negative 1 half is positive 1 half. Positive 1 half times 4 is just going to leave you with a 2 plus 6 equals 8. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? With even checking it out with fractions, we still go ahead and verify that both of those are going to be your solutions. Thanks.